Hey everyone, welcome to my vlog. So today's a pretty cool day, man. We got some crazy TB360 mowing going on. It's kind of like a now you see me, now you don't. Took a little bit of some editing to do, but we did it. Q&A. The Q&A is pretty awesome. Got some nine really good questions that I picked out of a whole bunch. Uh, so we did get to do some Q&A. Ended up being an 18 lawn day. Um, but we really had to race these storms and we came up a little bit short. No big deal. We'll put it all together at the end of the video and explain what we got to do for tomorrow. We got a whole bunch of stuff in this vlog today. So what do you say we just get to it? Good morning. We have a hell of a day today. 15 yards to do. We're going to head on up to Pooler. And, uh, oh, I think my neighbor's out running. Make our way back down this way. Knock out them 15 yards. That'll leave five on a schedule for old boy to do tomorrow. I have a two-story house wash job to do tomorrow. So tomorrow will be a very lucrative day if we can get through all 15 today. Might be a little bit of a late day. Let's go ahead and uh, load up garbage can and throw the mower in the back of the truck. some Q&A real fast so we got like nine questions to go over that I picked out of a whole slew so first one up BAM that one guy hey Dan what height do you cut your lawns at uh, typically I'm around three inches um, sometimes two and three quarter uh, I got one or two of them that are like two and a half they like it really low because their kids play all over the lawn and so their lawns kind of beat down um, I have a few that are like three and a half uh, but for the most part I'm right around three inches Here's another one, bam, H-H-K-K. You're right behind Geek the Freak. You give knowledge, not selfish, keep up the knowledge, bro. Hey, I'm just sharing what works for me, how my mind works. I'm not gonna ever tell you what you gotta do, how you gotta do it, that this is the way it's supposed to be. I'm not a how-to channel, although I'll have some how-to stuff, um, but it's always just the way I do things. Rocky locked himself in the bathroom. I got videos coming of that. You can hear Rocky whining. He locked himself in. Um, he actually takes the doorstop and he moves the doorstop out of the way and then he shuts the door. He, he's something. Uh, so, um, but yeah, I, I appreciate the comment and I, I'm trying to not be selfish. Um, I hope everybody can learn and learn from my mistakes. Take what I share and build your business and be successful and be happy. Ed Yeager. Add a little blue Loctite to them bolts or red Loctite uh, if you never want them to ever come out. That's right, Loctite's that really good stuff. If you guys don't know what Loctite is, go to any hardware store. Ace, True Value, a mom and pop hardware store, maybe you live in another country, um, Home Depot, Lowe's, Walmart probably carries it, Target probably carries it, Kmart probably carries it. Uh, Loctite's in little bottles, it's a little squeeze tube and you put one little drop on the threads of your bolts and it comes in different strengths. Red is like the strongest. Once you put red Loctite on, it's like super glue. Uh, it really doesn't want to come out. Um, and then blue will hold it a little bit tighter. Another thing you can do if you don't have Loctite is if you've got pesky bolts that want to come loose, uh, put a, a rung of um, uh, Teflon tape on them. If you put a little bit of Teflon tape on the threads and then put the bolt in or put the nut on, that Teflon tape will sometimes usually add enough uh, resistance to keep it from vibrating out too but edge right uh, blue or red Loctite is uh, awesome stuff so I recommend that Justin F BAM put it up just joined your channel Dan I'm starting my own lawn care business and love your daily vlogs well thank you Justin F I really do appreciate that uh, leave comments ask questions participate in the conversations grass cutter 88 put it up that's kind of cheap. That's kind of cheap. Just adding ten bucks for bushes and weeds. I usually charge like fifty to sixty-five for bush trimming alone. Uh, I don't know, man. 
Uh, now there's a time and a place where we can charge a lot of money for like cleanouts, or maybe they're like once every two or three months or something like that. Uh, but if you're shaping up bushes once a month or every other cut, you're in and out so fast, and the competition here is so fierce. Um, getting forty dollars for the yard and grinding weeds down with the um, with the weed eater and hitting the bushes ain't bad at all. I mean, honestly, you're in and out in about 35, 40 minutes. It's not it's not a big deal. I don't know. Maybe you're in the north or something, and things are different. But down here. $40 for a yard, the size of what we did yesterday is a good price. $50 would be ridiculous, um, including the hedges. But you got to remember, it's not $10 to do the bushes. It's $20 to do the bushes. They're going to pay $10 every cut more. And then you trim the bushes every other cut. So it's $20 to take maybe five minutes, literally five minutes, and hit them bushes. If it's an excessive amount of bushes, then of course it'll be more. But when they got just a little bit of stuff going on, just a basic um, package that comes when you buy the house, it's plenty money, seriously. Um, and, it, and it really has a lot to do with route discipline and route density. So, yeah, I mean, there's yards out there where I could probably charge more money, uh, but then I'm not going to have them so grouped together and I'm just going to spend the money behind the wheel driving to those yards and trying to build my business the way I'm building it where I can send a team or a guy with a push mower and he goes out and he makes 350, 400 bucks for my business that day and then I could send another guy another way and he makes 300 bucks, 400 bucks for my business that day. You know what I'm saying? And I pay them a cut and I pay him a cut and then I make a day's pay doing nothing. The only way you pull that off is if you could do it without them paying a lot of money in expenses because they're using their truck. So they start bitching, oh, I'm using a whole tank of gas Every two days, I'm using a full tank of gas. I want more money. You have a problem. So you send them out. They do the work. And it's all right there. It's in a concentrated area. So route discipline and route density will more than make up for driving around chasing a $50 bush. But I get what you're saying. And there is a time and a place for where I charge higher prices. But once everything's in shape, if it's the basic stuff, I'm in and out 40 bucks. Maybe it's a $50 yard. You know, maybe it's a $40 yard. It has to do with the size of the yard. And how long I'm going to be there. Um, but that yard could be done in like 35 minutes with a push mower. Um, including the bushes. So not a big deal. Snow RK. Boom. I love watching you go in circles. That must make me a mower nerd watching a guy go in circles. <laughs> That's a reference to my train video from Sunday. Where me and the boys went um, on a train. And then we saw every single train that went by. We chased them down and watched them. Uh, there's actually a name for that. Um, I, and somebody on my channel knows the name for what, what people are called, what the train people, like train conductors and train yard workers call people like us that sit there and watch trains. There's a name for that. I don't remember, but I'm just using the word nerd. Uh, so yeah, I made a little reference in my video that I admit I'm a train nerd. And if you're watching this video, watching me mow, you're a mower nerd. And uh, I'm going to address snow work and another one in a little bit, in just a minute. You are my guimon. Put them up. See you tomorrow, Dan. I got used Toro all-wheel drive today. It is great. Yeah, man, I hear great things about them Toro all-wheel drive. So thank you, Yorma, and good luck with your business up there. Okay, Lee Rezka. I'm not going to put this one up because it's a big comment. Okay, I'll put it up. I lied. Let me duck down a little. Make some room. <clears throat> okay, Lee Rezka. I'm making my own at the moment. Great tip off this video. Why is it important to have four gallons a minute? So he's talking about my pressure wash. All right, get that out of here. All right, he's talking about my pressure wash having four gallons a minute. He says he just bought a Honda with a GX160 with a cat water pump 279 on it. Uh, it's gas, 1500 PSI, 105 bar, 16 liters a minute. Is this any good for going commercial like yourself? Um, it is. 16 liters per minute seems like that would be enough. 1500 PSI seems a little bit thin, um, but I think 16 liters a minute, I'm pretty sure that's going to translate to about four gallons per minute, right? Pretty darn close to it. Um, the reason why the four gallon, you're asking why is, why is it important to have that? You know, is that going to be good? Um, the, the more gallons per minute that your pump can deliver, the faster you clean, the more dirt you move. It's not necessarily the pressure unless you're really using, unless you really need pressure. But 1500 PSI should be enough to do just about any, anything you need to do. Um, now if you start getting into like industrial stuff, that's different. Uh, but 
if you're doing like residential type stuff, you know, cleaning homes and stuff like that, it's the gallons per minute that matter more than anything else. You need it to move a lot of water, as much water as possible. That's how you'll be able to put the pink tip on and deliver your bleach and soap up high and you won't need to get on ladders and waste time. Um, that's how you'll put on a small little surface cleaner like I have and do concrete and, and it, it doesn't just hit the dirt but it moves the dirt because it's so much water coming out it's moving the dirt the more the better um, you have more water hitting the vinyl siding as you rinse and you can rinse the dirt the loose dirt and the spider webs and stuff like that off faster so that's why it's important the more gallons per minute the better and faster you can clean and move like that and knock jobs out five six seven houses in a day like I've done in the past I and mean, I think I did what six in one day had like a seven or eight hundred dollar day house washing it was amazing uh, so that that's why you want the gallons per minute the more gallons per minute the faster you move dirt and then going back to snow RK uh, Ryan Keller put it up why do you not strike um, so Snow work made a comment about me mowing in circles. A few other people have made comments about me mowing in circles, and I don't take it as, as like disrespect. I don't mean it that way. I know, I know what you guys mean. Um, you watch other channels, and they stripe. They go up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. They make these stripes, okay? Ryan wants to know why I don't strike. A couple reasons. One, I don't cut high enough to strike. You have to cut high to strike. Grass blades, you have one side of your grass blade is curved, and the other side of your grass blade is curved. You have con concave and you have no you have yeah you have concave and you have convex, okay? Like that. Alright, your grass blade is like this. Going well, it's actually it's like this, going up, right? Um, when it lays over, this is going to show with the sun a different color beating you back in your eye. Alright? When it lays this way, then this is not going to show you that same color. This makes a light green color. This makes a dark green color. Light green, dark green. Light green, dark green. So as you have tall grass sticking up like this, right? And you go over it with your mower, you lay it this way, okay? And then when you come back the other way on your next strip, you come back and you lay that this way, okay? And then you go back and you lay it that way. And then you have your light green and your dark green. In order to do that, you gotta have a pretty good set of lawn blades or, or you know grass blades still sticking up now I cut at three inches alright three inches isn't gonna stick up and isn't gonna roll over sometimes I cut even lower um, but three inches isn't really gonna roll over and show you that it's I said it before it's like your hair if you cut your hair real short it's gonna stand up if you let your hair go long it's gonna start to fall you know you'll get your part you'll do the things that you, you know your hair starts to fall but when you cut it real short, your hair stays straight. Well, when you cut grass at three inches, what happens is it stays straight up and down. So you're not going to get that light green, dark green, because it's going to stand straight up and down. So that's one reason. My customers would never let me cut that high, number one. Number two, um, nobody ever asks for stripes because nobody around here cares for stripes. They want their grass to be shorter. They want to go outside and play in it and their dogs, I had one customer complain that their dog's balls were rubbing the grass even after we left. Um, they had a little dog, so they want us to like golf course their, their yard. No problem. Um, so I just don't cut high enough. My customers would never let me get away with cutting that high, not this type of grass. Maybe up there, them other guys can do that stuff, but I can't do that, number one. The next point is I don't have a shoot blocker. So when I'm cutting these yards that are kind of thick um, and I have my my side shoot down I have to chase the clipping so if I go this way and I shoot it in that's great and when I come back this way I'm shooting it out over what I just cut that sucks now I gotta go back and cut them clippings again so I usually just make my squares it's just what I've always done I make my squares if it's thin enough yard then I'll, I'll go back and forth as if I'm striping but I'm not striping because I know I'm not striping because I know I'm cutting the grass too low it's just not gonna stripe you might almost see some stripes in there uh, but that's not gonna last at all because uh, it's just too short so the grass might lay over for a little bit but it's gonna stand right back up it's just too short um, so no shoot blocker means I have to chase clippings I don't like to chase clippings if I don't need to chase clippings so I don't do the stripe pattern if it's thick grass um, and nobody around here stripes nobody cares about stripes customers don't care about stripes um, 
we don't cut high enough to make stripes and I don't know so that's the deal now I do the stripe pattern when I can do the stripe pattern because I like the straightest possible lines as possible but when push comes to shove my goal is I want the grass to be cut I want it to be smooth I want my pattern to look good I don't care how many times I go around in a circle to chop clippings it makes no difference to me as long as it looks cut it looks green it looks nice the customers happy everything's we needed blended nice it looks smooth that's all I care about couldn't give a crap about stripes honestly I really don't I don't get bent around the axle over stripes um, just means absolutely nothing to me so there that's that and I think that closes out Q&A so we got three done it's uh, 940 we got one more to do up here in the pooler area then we're gonna head on down and start knocking them out um, the rest of the yards will go by pretty quick, pretty quick. Probably, I think it turns out to be 16 lawns today. Um, I think one's not on the list. So I'm pretty sure we got 16 to do today and we'll probably be done around 3, 30, 4 o'clock. Probably a pretty good day. I think so. Let's mow. Okay, so we are moving along. Um, we have all of Friday's work done, but it's Thursday. But we finished Friday's work. <coughs> we squeezed in some of Thursday's work. And now we're gonna go do the few that we didn't do yesterday because of the storm. So they're right around the corner here. So we're gonna go do those yards. There's four customers there. It's actually three yards and a small little entranceway. So we're gonna get those knocked out. Once we get those knocked out, then we have uh, eight left to do today which would then leave five for old boy to do tomorrow and i go pressure wash a house if the storms come in as long as we have these next four done then the 13 that'll be left to do the eight today and the five for tomorrow can easily be done between today and uh tomorrow and then if i have to pressure wash on saturday i'll pressure wash on saturday a girl after my own heart I love fitness. All right, man, so we did the uh, the four I needed to get done. 
by 1.30. We left there like 1.15. We've done a couple more. We're going to do one more here. The storms are on us, so we're going to squeeze this one out. Get this done as quickly as possible, and then uh, we're going to talk about it when we get home. Old boy, he's got a dump run. He's got to go make. Uh, so he was like, hey, look, man, if we can get off early, I can go make a couple hundred bucks. So I'm going to get done early for him, um, and that's just going to carry over like nine or ten lawns for tomorrow total with the five that he does. So we'll talk about that later. Let's get this done and uh, take it from there. Well, guys, like I said, we came up a little bit short, but that's okay. Uh, we had the eight to do, and we ended up doing three of those eight. So we have five carried over to tomorrow to go with the five that old boy uh, was going to do normally. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have him go out and do the five that he would normally do. I'm going to have him start off with that, and I'm going to go do that pressure wash job. And then I'm going to join him uh, once I'm done with the pressure wash job. He should have at least three done and she, he should be on two, the last two of the day of his five. Then I'm going to join him with the lawn trailer and we're going to go and whip through those last five. Probably a two o'clock day tomorrow. Maybe a one o'clock, two o'clock day tomorrow. But it's really important that I get this two-story house done. I promised the lady I would. So we're going to get that two-story done. I'll do that in the morning. He'll go out and start the five that he would normally do on Saturday. He's going to start those tomorrow. Then I'll join him, and then we'll finish our day. Ten yards in a two-story pressure wash, and all customers satisfied, no work on the weekend. Leave your comments below. Check the charity link below. Thank you guys so much, and I will see you guys tomorrow.